<clears throat> Everybody situated? Katie needs a hot second. Hey everybody, today I want to talk about your brushes. Your brushes are an investment, okay? Um, a quality brush isn't always going to be inexpensive and you want them to last a long time. So today we're going to be going over six ways to keep your brushes like new. The first thing you should consider when you're trying to keep your brushes like new is trying your best to keep the paint from reaching the bottom of the ferrule, okay? So a lot of times when you load your brush, if you're being kind of nonchalant about it or chalant, I don't know what the word is, um, you just kind of, you know, jamming it in there, which is fine, especially if you're in the zone, but if, if it's possible, if you can just be a little bit conscientious, this is the danger zone right here, okay? Right here, when you get paint in there, it's really difficult to get it out. Uh, it can get stuck in there, even if you try to clean it really good. If little bits of pigment dry up in there, it can fray out the entire brush. The hair can go in all kinds of directions. So it's really best, if possible, to load your brush from the top and try to not let it get too far down to the ferrule, okay? Um, just keep that in mind when you're painting. Try to be a little conscientious of that, and that will make the cleaning of the brush much easier, and also you'll find that you'll have better control because it will hold its shape even with paint on it a lot better because once paint starts getting in there, the entire kind of flow of the brush is off. The second tip that I wanna give you for keeping your brushes like new is not to mix mediums. Now, uh, again, I've said this before, it's very important that if you want your brushes to stay like new, you keep one medium with one brush. So this, as I've just used it with oil paint, is an oil paint brush. Of course, I could clean it and use it for acrylic, but you're just not gonna get the same results. And if you've been using acrylic and you're switching to oils, well, I suppose that's okay, but you're not gonna be able to go back to acrylic. Uh, oil is really the end all. And one of the biggest questions I get is, well, what if I'm using water mixable oils? Treat them like oil brushes uh, and keep them separate. It's, it's, best, it's best to keep it for its individual medium, okay? And, and I'm coming up here and I'm doing an entire video on trying to keep your brushes like new. So, you know, a lot of people out there are like, well, he wants to sell me brushes for every single kind of medium I use. I don't know how many mediums you use. If you just use oils, then you're fine. Um, I'm trying to help you preserve these things so that they last a long time. Okay? Remember, the goal is to keep your brushes lasting as long as possible so you don't have to keep reinvesting in brushes. So if you can dedicate a brush to a certain type of paint, they're going to last longer, preventing you from having to rebuy them again and again. Again, keep it oil paint, oil brush, acrylic paint, uh, your acrylic brush, and that will keep them lasting a lot longer. The third thing might seem obvious, but it happens so frequently, for God's sakes, do not let paint dry on your brush, okay? Oil paint, you have a, a little bit of a window. You know, you can leave this sitting for an hour or so and it won't uh, be the end of the world. Acrylic paint, you do not have a window. You gotta keep those things clean. Once paint dries on the brush, I'm sure that there's plenty of people out there that have done their best to restore brushes and some might actually, you know, do a good job getting that paint off, but it's never quite the same, I find. It's almost like a car that's been in an accident and then fixed to be like new. There's just always something a little off and it's a lot of work. I mean, if you think about taking a couple of hours to clean a brush and let's say that, you know, we're just gonna use some little simple math here. Let's say that you make $10 an hour and it takes you two and a half hours to clean your brush. Well, that means that you could have been earning $25 and if your brush was $17, you just lost money. Does that make sense? That's just some economy stuff, economics. That's, that's not what you're here for, I'm sorry. The point is, don't allow the paint to dry on your brush. That is a big no-no and it might seem pretty obvious, but like I said, this happens more often than you think. Another thing you gotta be conscientious about is making sure that your brushes, especially when you're using something like acrylic paint, which dries very fast, do not stay with paint on them too long, okay? If it does dry on there, you can try to clean it out. It's gonna be a lot of work, especially if you're using oil paint or acrylic. I mean, these things are designed to dry permanently. I mean, we want permanence in our artwork, so if you let it dry on your brush, you're gonna probably get some type of permanence on your brush, so just keep that in mind. Uh, again, these are investments, and even if you can get the paint out, will it have been worth your time? That depends on the brush and how badly you want that brush to be restored. The fourth way you can keep your brushes like new, and it might sound obvious again, is that you clean, condition, shape, and rinse your brush 
every single time you paint. Not once a week, um, not when it's convenient, every time you paint. When you're done, you are going through this process, okay? This is going to add years of life to your brush if you do it properly. Let me show you. The first thing when you're using oil paint, and we're gonna be using oil paint up here to start with. If you're using acrylic paint, it's sort of similar, only you're not using a paint thinner, you're using water. But you're gonna to try to get all the excess paint you can off on a paper towel, okay? Now, I will just give you this disclaimer. When it comes to keeping your brushes like new, pigments are staining. I am not promising you that you're gonna be able to get those bristles back to that very natural hair color. It's not likely if you're using especially, you know, very staining colors. Uh, but the brush should function like new. That's the point, okay? So you're gonna get off that excess paint. Then you're gonna go into your paint thinner, okay? And you're just gonna rake it across the bottom trying to loosen up any of that pigment. Again, you hopefully did not let paint get all the way up into the ferrule. If you did, you can try to push on a little bit harder um, to try to get more paint thinner in there. And you go back to your paper towel and you get that paint thinner out. Okay, now we have gotten a good amount of the paint out, but we wanna clean these brushes, okay? What we basically just did was try to remove all the excess, now we wanna clean them. So now we're gonna switch over to water, okay? What I have here is the Chelsea Classical Studio uh, Lavender and Olive Oil Soap. This is one of the various brush cleaners available out there on the market. What you're gonna do is switch over to your water, and you are going to probably be at a sink when you do this, but we're here on camera, make a nice lather, okay? I want you to lather it up. This soap not only cleans the brush, but conditions it. It's like the pert plus of brush hair cleaner. It will keep your brushes like new, okay? So now I've got a really good lather on my brush, all right? Now this is important. What I'm gonna do is just try to, this is a size eight filbert. This is one of my favorite sizes. It's a very common, um, easy to use size that is pretty much applicable for most painting applications. It's a very go-to brush. I'm gonna to try to reshape it to that almond shape, okay? Now with the brush loaded up, I'm just gonna set it to dry just, just for a few minutes. You don't have to leave it for a long time, okay? The idea is to let that uh, brush soap kind of do its thing, get in between the bristles, loosen up anything uh, that is still stuck in there, and then also kind of help it relearn that shape. We wanna keep the shape because over time that brush can fray out. All right, after you've let your brushes soak for a bit in the brush soap, you're going to then rinse again and get all of that soap out. This can all be done over the sink at this point. You've gotten uh, rid of almost all of the paint, all of the thinner. You're just trying to clean out any last little bits. Okay, then you're just gonna dry it. And again, just sort of get it back to that nice shape, that nice filbert shape for this filbert brush, okay? And then that puts us in a perfect place to move on to number five. Tip number five is all about brush storage, okay? You've painted, you've cleaned your brush, you've conditioned your brush, you've reshaped your brush, you've given it all the TLC it deserves, now you gotta store it. What's the best way to store it, okay? The first thing I'm gonna teach you is how not to store it. Absolutely not. No, 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 do not do this. You should not store your brushes upright, all right? I see this all the time. People put them in a bin. In fact, I'm pretty sure there are bins of them behind me for display purposes only. It might look nice, but it's not ideal for a brush that's in frequent use. Um, what's gonna happen is anything that you might have forgotten in there is going to just kind of sink further into the ferrule, which is that place you don't want any extra sediment to be because that will kind of, again, let the let the whole the whole thing will just kind of come apart. You, you just don't want to do that. Now, possibly even worse, you don't want to store them face down in a jar, okay? This is a no-no too, okay? Face down in a jar, you're gonna be leaving your brush with the very precious bristles schmooshed, okay, at the bottom. This is going to cause damage over time to your brush, all right? It might not even be that much time. This is not, great either, okay? So, all right, great, you can't store it up, you can't store it down. How am I supposed to store it? Ah, okay, well, there are two ways you can store a brush properly, all right? The first way is not, not the easiest, and it's not gonna be for everybody, but if you can do it, great. 
is to suspend your brush upside down. This is probably the most ideal, but yet the most pain in the neck way of doing it. Um, I've seen people use clips. I've actually seen some people that drill holes into their brushes and put little loops and allow the brush to hang naturally upside down that will keep its shape uh, perfectly. And also because of gravity, any sediment in there is now coming out of the brush rather than further into the brush. But for those of you that don't have a brush suspension system at home, uh, the easiest way and most common way to store your brush properly is to leave it flat. Now, with that being said, you will still wanna make sure that you keep them safe. The bristles can collect dust, they're wet, you wanna protect them. You wanna protect them from pet hair, you wanna protect them from um, mold, mildew, anything, okay? So how do we protect our brushes when we lay them down? I'm gonna show you something that I really like. It's a new product of ours called the uh, New York Central Rhino Tough Brush Roll. Check this thing out. All right, so whether you're traveling or just wanna keep your brushes safe in the studio, this is the New York Central Rhino Tough Brush Roll. And let me show you how this works. The entire thing is made of a poly cotton blend. This is going to make the fabric waterproof yet breathable. I always find that fascinating, but I assure you that's what it does. Now, why is that important? Well, when you put wet brushes into something, there's always a risk if they can't breathe that they will mildew or even mold, okay? That won't happen with this. And also, this is a way to protect those brushes from things like dust, pet hair, all the elements that can happen. So all you're gonna do is take your brush and store them in like this. Now, these brush rolls can hold a total of 24 brushes, okay? There's a slot for 12 short handle brushes and 12 long handle brushes. Now, these will also accommodate extra long handle brushes. You can just see here, if the brush came up to here, it would still accommodate them. Now, this is where it's special. When you fold this over, you're getting protection from the tip of your brush, okay? Again, whether you're traveling or whether you're staying in the studio, this will not only keep your brushes safe, but it will keep them organized and in a smaller footprint than having them all laid out everywhere, saving you valuable studio space that you might not even have. Because it's made of this Rhino Tough fabric, you don't have to worry about your brushes damaging the brush roll either, okay? This stuff is designed to withstand uh, the normal things that come with artist brushes. So if you've cleaned them properly, you have nothing to fear. And again, you don't have to worry about mold or mildew. And this flap right here will keep them um, down. So first thing I want to do is load this up with brushes to just kind of give you an idea of what it would look like with all the brushes. And I'm going to show you how to roll it up real quick. Okay. I've got myself all loaded up here with my um, Imperial bristle brushes. All right. And you can see even the most fragile, delicate fan brush, I feel fine storing in here. And what you're going to do is fold down this top portion Okay, and then you're just gonna roll it up like the name implies. And then you can use these ties here to hold it together, stick it in a drawer, stick it in your book bag, and it's good to go. That's it, that's 12 long handle artist brushes all here. And then when you're ready to paint, this is the beautiful part, you're like a doctor getting ready to perform surgery. You just whip all those bad boys out and boom, you're ready to go right there. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this Rhino Tough brush roll. It's something that I've been using since we started carrying it. If you're interested in this product, you should check out the link below. Uh, down below, you'll also find a special discount code, good for this weekend only, okay? So be sure to take advantage of that if you're interested in one of these brush roll-ups because they do a great job at protecting your brushes for not a lot of money and make it really convenient to keep them organized and safe. The sixth and final way to keep your brushes like new is simply flick the tip. All right, now when a brush dries, a lot of times it loses its shape, right? It, you know, this is a Kalinsky hairbrush. By the looks of it, it's been laying flat on something, you know what I mean? Uh, and, and you wanna kinda get those brushes back, all right? So what you're gonna do is take it, just get it wet, all right? Then you take it out of the water, and you're gonna just flick the tip and you should get that beautiful point right back, okay? Now this is a natural Kalinsky hairbrush, but um, even with like bristle hairbrushes, you can go ahead and you know do something similar where you put it in water, get it wet, and then before you paint, you flick the tip and try to get that shape back, okay? So tip flicking is for you. So if you wanna get the original point back to get that like new appearance, flick the tip, right? No, it's still a little weird. So unlike all the other tips, which is for after you've done painting, this is how to keep your brushes like new when you wanna start painting again, to get back those original shapes. You wanna flick the tips to get back those original shapes so that they will give you those nice lines, crisp lines that you expect from a like new brush. 
What are some things that I missed? What are some ways that you at home keep your brushes like new? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, as you know, there is a limited time deal on the Rhino Tough brush roll. If you are watching this video after the weekend we have launched it and you've missed the deal, please be sure to ring the bell to be notified when we post a new video so that you can be one of the first to take advantage of the special deals that we are offering. Also, please subscribe to our channel and like this video. Give it a big thumbs up if it was helpful to you. And uh, yeah, if you want to continue to keep things like new, be sure to follow me on Instagram because that makes sense, at Mike Not Jerry. Yeah, that's right. Uh, where I continue to post art tips, art related stuff, and just some personal stuff. I'm on there, you know, frequently posting just things that make me happy, basically. It's what it is. And hopefully this will help you keep your brushes a long, long time. Because for me, it's most important that I keep you guys motivated to do art. That's what this channel is all about. It's uh, keeping you in the creative zone. So I hope this helps and uh, you are keeping your brushes like new.